Welcome everybody, it's Jim McIntosh. I was involved with the m &R on plugging a well south of Chatham, right on the banks of Lake Erie. Um, this talk talks about the planning that went into that plugging and a successful plugging job. This talk, as I said, is about a successful plugging of a hazardous, dangerous well on the bluffs of Lake Erie. You can see the picture here on the left is the well before it was plugged. You can see a chunk of casing sticking out of the bank with some tubing sticking out of that. The bank is just down below that. The other picture is what the well looked like at the point where it was plugged before we cut off the wellhead. The well was, we ended up calling it Lake Bank Number 1. It's in Raleigh Township. The talk will talk about the well itself, how we measure the stability of the bank to determine how close equipment could get to the wellhead, the challenges getting access since there was no chance of a rig positioning over the well, uh, the procedures used to remove the old wellhead and put on a new one to allow access to the well, the actual plugging procedures that were followed, and the final results. This shows you a picture of the well. You can see the circle there with the chunk of casing. Uh, this is taken by the m &R had hired a drone with a camera on there to fly around in the location. You can see where the guys are standing back close to the farmed part of the field. Really, the only thing holding this bank section of the bank in place is the fact that the well is still there. You can see that on both sides of the bank, it's completely eroded away. This is a close-up of the well itself. You can see a 10 and 3 quarter casing sticking out of the ground with a collar just above ground, a short section of 10 and 3 quarter with a plate on the top, the two inch tubing coming out of the top of the plate with a couple of L's on there. That was the status at the point where the well started to get plugged. There was no direct information on this particular well, but based on the surrounding wells, we built a well profile on what likely the well looked like downhole. We had the 10 and 3 quarter casing drilled and driven to bedrock, five inch casing set on a shoe at the top of the G shale, um, just to isolate all of the Ronian section from the well. Then the hole would have been TD'd likely at the, about the top of the Guelph with the tubing set on a packer to produce all the production coming up the two inch tubing. The plan for abandoning the well was to do soil testing because of the stability of the bank to determine how close equipment could get to the bank edge. Because the well itself is so precarious, all personnel needed to be harnessed up with fall protection and to have fall arrest training. We needed to keep all the vehicles away from the bank based on the results of the soil testing. Then we needed to split and cut the 10 and 3 quarter pup joint and collar down to the 10 and 3 quarter pin coming up. We needed to cold cut the tubing where it was bent to be able to get to a straight section of tubing. Then put a wellhead on between the 10 and 3 quarter and the 2 inch tubing. Once we had access to the well, we needed to go in, check tubing depths, perforate the tubing, hopefully below the five and a half inch casing to allow us to circulate the cement throughout the whole well to plug in. The procedures used to access the well, soil testing was done by an outfit out of Windsor for the MNR. Based on that soil testing, they had a no go without fall protection boundary that they had identified around the well. We ended up using that throughout the plugging the well to make sure nobody went past that without having a harness on and, and being roped in. There was training for the rig crew. Uh, we ended up bleeding off the two inch tubing, cold cutting the tubing below the T and valves to remove it. And then at that point, we were able to split the 10 and three quarter casing down to the collar and remove the 10 and three quarter puck joint and the collar from the pin coming out of the ground. We installed a new 10 and 3 quarter collar on that pin, cold cut the tubing so it's now straight going into the well. We ended up connecting the old tubing coming out of the well with a pop joint with a dresser sleeve and then installed a wellhead over top of everything else and shut the well once we were all cut in. This is a setup for the fall arrest guys. You can see all the ropes on the ground. Every time anybody had access to the well, they were wearing a harness, were hooked up to these ropes. The fall arrest guys kept tension on the ropes as they worked towards the well, did whatever work they needed to do out on the bank 
and then the rope was kind of hauled back in again. You can see the two steel posts there. That's the no-go spot that was identified by the soil testing guys. So no equipment or personnel without being harnessed up were allowed to go past that. This picture shows the two rake crew guys cutting off the tubing before we installed the dresser sleeve. You can see how close to the edge they are. You can see the, the rope hook and their harnesses in place, that kind of level of, of right on the edge of the lake that they were. Um, this is a picture of the dresser sleeve that was installed on the tubing. You can see as well, we've got a new 10 and three quarter collar on here at that point. And then this is a picture of the new wellhead with the 10 and three quarter collar. You can see the swedges and the wellhead with the tubing coming out the top. We've also got the hose in this picture hooked up to get ready to start pumping down the well. So that's the situation we can now get access to the well. So the actual plugging down hole, after we had put the wellhead on and shut the well in overnight, we had 365 pounds on the tubing the next morning. So it was definitely still significant gas in the well. It bled off very quickly in five minutes. We had to use a picker to hold the wireline lubricator and shiv because nobody could get close. Uh, so we ran in with a sinker bar, tagged soft obstruction at 270 meters, which we weren't able to jar to get any deeper. So we ended up perforating the tubing and the five and a half inch casing just above that 270 meters, that 268 meters. There was a strong vacuum after we perforated on the 10 and three quarter two inch annulus. So we knew we had good communication through the tubing now. We hooked up the cementers and circulated the well over to fresh water. In the process, we circulated out one cube of real nice clean oil before we ended up getting clean water returns. Once we had the well circulated to water, we mixed up. We continuously mixed cement and pumped it down the tubing until we got good cement returns to surface. That ended up taking 5.8 ton of cement, which is a slurry volume of 4.36 cubes. The theoretical hole volume inside that five and a half should have been only 3.2 cubes. So we pumped 36% excess cement. We really don't know if that excess cement fed down hole past the soft fill or fed out into the 10 and three quarter annuals. The following morning, the cement top had settled down 10 meters, so we ended up topping it back up for that picture that you saw at the start of the picture. At that point, we were completely plugged downhill. This picture just shows the Weatherford wireline skid-mounted unit running the wireline in here for perforating. And you can see the crane in there holding up their lubricator, how far the crane had to stay back from the well. This is what the well looks like after it was plugged. You can see our perforations through the tubing and potentially through the five and a half casing. All the cement inside the five and a half and two inch, both down at the perforated depth plus at surface. This picture, that original plugging occurred back in 2016. This is a picture of that same site a week ago. You can see that all indications of the well are completely gone. The bank has completely eroded away. The 10 and three quarter casing, tubing, cement, everything fell into the lake. It's now, now lost. It would have been really, really ugly if that well hadn't been plugged. And until now, they, we have no way of getting access or even knowing where it was. We just have an oil spout coming out in Lake Erie. This well was plugged using the abandoned works program of the MNR. So what did we learn? You need to think outside the box when you have unusual and challenging wells like this to plug. Safety is job one. There was no option but to ensure that we protect the workers. We knew we couldn't get a rig to the location, so there was no option but to do it rigless. As you saw in the picture since 2016, that bank has completely eroded and the casings fallen into Lake Erie it would be just unimaginable how we would be able to get access to the well and try to plug it now. Thanks to Socking Brothers, Weatherford Wireline, Black Creek Well Servicing, Matt Marsh Cranes, Ron and Rescue, and CT Soil for all their work doing the job. It was very much a successful team effort, got it successfully plugged. Um, I guess the other comment for unusual well encounters like this, Planning and precautions make all the difference for how successful the job's going to be. Thank you.